Lithium-ion battery fires are an increasingly explosive problem for New York City, and so is the housing shortage. Questions for the former fire commissioner, Daniel Nigro, and Manhattan Borough President, Mark Levine. The Point starts right now. Daniel Nigro has had a storied career with the New York City Fire Department. He led the agency as chief of department after 9-11, and in 2014 came out of retirement for an eight-year stint as fire commissioner. And it is a huge honor to have you be on the show today. I'd like to start off by talking about the lithium-ion batteries that are causing so many fires in the city. 219 fires last year, untold injuries and even fatalities. What should we be doing? Well, the fire department's been talking about this really heavily since 2021. Uh, we noticed this strong uptick in 2022. It was even worse. And already this year, we've, uh, we've, it keeps increasing. So now, finally, it's been noticed by uh, city, by city council, by the state legislature, and even by the federal government. Uh, Richie Torres is talking about federal legislation. So it is being addressed, but unfortunately, as, as that goes on, as government grinds on with regulations, uh, these fires will continue, injuries will continue, and unfortunately, so will deaths. But see, here we have a situation where at the fire department headquarters, people are not allowed to bring in scooters and e-bikes that have lithium-ion batteries. Why can't buildings do the same thing? You know, regular buildings, apartment buildings, NYCHA complexes, even, even you know, places where people go to work that have office buildings. Why can't they be banned? I think some office buildings have done that, and they have the right to do that. Um, I don't think residences have done. I don't know of any uh, residential buildings who've done it. NYCHA said they were going to do it, and then they said they weren't going to do it. So. Unfortunately, and we've had fires in these NYCHA buildings, we've had one where if these two young people were not like gymnasts, where they climbed down the outside of the building, they would have been killed, and one man was killed in that apartment. Um, these are tremendously hazardous, and um, it's going to take a long time for regulations to get approved, and I hope they are, and I hope they're very stringent because lives are at risk with these batteries. But I guess the question is this. I live in an apartment building where I see people get on the elevator with scooters and e-bikes. The question is, should they be allowed to bring these bikes into their apartment dwellings, or should there be some kind of a fireproof, secure room in an apartment building where they can leave these devices so that they can't pose a threat to other people who live in the building? I think that would be the best possible solution, that they weren't brought into the apartments. We're trying through education already to tell people, um, as we did with power strips, don't use power strips that aren't UL approved. Don't use batteries that are not UL approved in these devices. Don't use cables that are not compatible with the battery. If you saw the video from Sunday at that supermarket, I did. and you see how fast the fires can can go. The battery explodes, and within and seconds, um, you can't leave your apartment if that's in front of the exit door, and that's it. So uh, th these are dangerous. We've been saying it in the fire department. We've been we've been citing the dangers, and we hope that the city, state, and federal government are quick with rules to keep people safe. So is it possible to develop some kind of a fireproof bag? that you could put your battery in so that if something happens, it, the, it's contained in this pouch? Not that I'm aware of. I, I, I think if these devices aren't being charged, generally when these occur, they're plugged in, they're being charged, the battery overheats, and, and it gives off a gas and explodes. Um, buildings, how are you getting um, information about containers that they can put you know, almost like a shipping container without electrical power so that you can't charge your bike in there or your scooter and you leave it in there until you're ready to go home from work or you're ready to leave your apartment. Um, it would be more of an ideal situation than uh, risking 
bringing these devices uh, into a multiple dwelling. See, but you know, we talk about a federal response, but I wonder if, in addition to federal rules that would regulate the batteries around the country and require them to be uh, UL certified, that maybe there should be an effort to confiscate some of these batteries that are coming in at the port that are black market batteries that may not uh, be up to UL standards. Yeah, I think they should be. I think, you know, the fire commissioner, she uh, she sent a very strong letter to the to the government uh, saying they should uh, stop allowing the import of these batteries because of the damage that they're doing. And, and we hope people listen. We'll keep sending that message. Do you think, though, that, I mean, are they concerned because they, they're afraid it will exacerbate tensions with China because most of these batteries are coming in from China? I... I guess that's above my pay grade, uh, and I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. So what about enforcing liability for companies um, that allow their employees to use these black market batteries? Um, the president of the Firefighters Union told me that if UPS could be held liable when one of their trucks hit somebody in the street, why couldn't a company like DoorDash or Grubhub or Uber Eats or any of these other delivery companies be held liable if somebody takes their battery into their house and it causes a fire that kills the people who live above them? I guess we could consult with attorneys and they would say uh, they could be liable. Why wouldn't they be? And, and maybe that should start happening and maybe the companies would ensure that those people using a bike to deliver food under their name, Grubhub or wherever it is, um, would be doing it correctly. Uh, I know the city council has talked about exchanging batteries with these folks that do food deliveries. Here, here's a, a safe, safer battery and uh, you think we'll that's viable, the that the city should pay for batteries for delivery people? I guess it's preferable <sighs> to having firefighters and other people face injury and death by fighting these fires. I guess that's where they got the idea from, although, you know, why should the city be paying? But then again, it's, uh, it's certainly a better option than, than seeing these injuries, deaths, and destruction of property. Would you say that this is like the biggest problem now facing the fire department? Oh, I think it is. Firewise, uh, you know, every winter we, we would stress uh, space heaters cause fires, or weather gets cold, uh, smoking, people, there's fewer people smoking nowadays, but smoking still causes fires. Now it's, it's already, I think, the third greatest cause of fires in New York City, suddenly. And I mean, it wasn't on the radar a few years ago, and it's up to third already when, and spiking. It'll probably, as it continues, be the number one cause of structural fires. So there also seems to be a union uproar about plans that are being discussed to transfer some uh, structural inspections from the fire department to the buildings department and allow uh, something they call self-certification by landlords that their structures are sound. I wonder how you come down on that. Well, you know, this has been uh, somewhat of a ping pong ball through history of uh, between the fire department and building department, who should inspect certain aspects, who should have control over certain things. Even went so far, maybe 25 years or so, um, there was an idea that the fire department should take over the building department, which the fire department wanted no part of. Um, I don't know if that idea is great. I don't know about self-certification. Most people in the industry believe there's a great risk with self-certification and they have uh, they have a history of problems to prove that in a perfect world where people honestly did that self-certification and looked out for one another great idea but unfortunately we don't live in a perfect world but see the, I guess the question is and I think the reason why the um, the mayor is considering it is because he wants to eliminate red tape and that there was a backlog of inspections obviously caused during the pandemic. I mean, is that a legitimate reason for taking the fire department out of the equation? Well, it did get to be a backlog. You know, one reason, of course, in the fire department, many of our inspectors were pulled out of fire inspection and were doing inspection of public places for COVID violations. and. Uh, that backlog remains. Now there's a hiring issue problem, be and both in the fire and building department, uh, there's a shortage of inspectors. Okay. And well, I'm, I'm sorry, we have so much to talk about, but we're going to have to leave it right there. Thank you so much for being here. It's really an honor to have you. Thank you. We'll be right back.